the walk-in turn drill. In this scenario, you are walking and somebody suddenly approaches behind you. You may be on an empty a street or sidewalk and it's unusual that somebody suddenly came up behind you. And more than likely, had somebody come up behind you as you were walking, you had a glance back and realized the person was back there. But in this scenario, the person is suddenly right there. Now think about it. When we're walking along and we're in mental condition yellow and paying attention, if somebody approaches us from another angle, that's very easy to deal with. You know, you're walking, this guy comes here, you drop into the relaxed ready position and you deal with him. He's in your field of vision here. It's in these directions back here and especially your direct six that is gonna be very difficult to deal with. So in the walk and turn drill, you're walking and there's a potential threat behind you and that's just the point. Something has alarmed you, but you're not sure if it's danger or not. Could be somebody just came up behind you suddenly and you just didn't realize they were there. We've all had that experience and we've all done that to somebody where you surprised them and walked up on them. So we can't just spin around and attack, but we do need to protect ourselves just in case it is an assailant. It's sudden and the person is right in your vicinity. If you're teachers and you're teaching this to a group class, you can do this in a three-step fashion, three steps in turn. If there's more room to work with and you're working individually, it makes sense to take more than three steps, less than three steps, uh, and actually in the ideal sense, you would walk and something would trigger you to turn around, a, a, a teacher clapping or something like that. Then it makes the turn genuine. I'm gonna address that more in a moment. But let's look at it now with the three steps in turn. Okay, you got your students all lined up or you're by yourself in training because you certainly could do the three steps in turn. I think I'll do it facing the camera first so I'm certain that you can hear me. One, two, and on the third step, I turn. One, two, and on the third step, I turn. And if doing so, when you start with your left foot, left, right, you will turn to a right side lead with three steps in and vice versa. When you start with your right foot, one, two, three, you will spin to a left side lead. Now let's talk about more about what I'm doing there. I'm walking, I suddenly, I heard the thing, the person behind me. I don't know, maybe it's somebody on a bicycle. I've had that experience. And the bike is coming up quickly on you and it's gonna go by on your right or your left, and, uh, but you don't know that, it's just suddenly come up on you. When you turn, we are turning to the relaxed, ready position. So several things happen at once. The first thing that ought to happen is your head turn immediately. So your vision starts to get on track with whatever is back there. Notice that when I turn my head, it starts to turn my body as well. And the reason to turn the head is, of course, it will turn the body, is, but you're trying to lock your eyes onto what is this behind me, friend or foe? Is this something I'm gonna have to react to in a self-defense emergency violently, or is it just somebody passing by? So the head turns immediately and it starts to turn the body. And we turn into the relaxed, ready position. And at this point, we deal with whatever is happening appropriately. When you turn, turn the head immediately and start to spin around. Drop your chin slightly. And very important, raise your hands immediately. One of the weaknesses I'll notice with students sometimes in the beginning is they do it like this. I brought my hands up too late. Now I'm gonna do it correctly. When you spin around like this, it's either friend or foe, so to speak. If it's not a, a threat, friend, so to speak, you're gonna alarm them and they're gonna realize that they alarmed you. And I know this because it's happened to me a number of times. Somebody's come up on me suddenly and I didn't know they were there and I spun around them. 
when I realize, oh, that's not a threat. The guy's equally as shocked. No, oh, I'm sorry. I realize he walked right up on me. So when we're spinning around, we're identifying what is going on here. And the first immediate thing is, is this a potentially violent circumstance or not? And I guess you can never know for sure, but you may turn around and it's just a guy there and he walks by you and uh, you realize that you just got startled by him. Or you might spin around and he's in the midst of an attack. We're gonna talk about, in future videos, what to do if he is an attacker. Right now, I just want you to practice the walk and turn around. Now, I want to come back to what I said earlier. Something I said earlier. When I'm teaching the group class, and I'm teaching this concept to the class, Let's say I have, I don't know, eight, nine, ten people in the class. I have them uh, turn their backs to me and they're to walk away from me. So they're walking away from me and at some unspecified time, I clap my hands. And when I clap my hands, that's when the threat appears. And what you'll notice, teachers, as you're doing this is when it's done correctly, well, whether it's done correctly or not, the students will turn at different times. They won't all turn to the same, at the same time, to the same side. And the reason is very important, and it brings out a very important point in the walk and turn drill. You want to continue to carry forward from this potential threat. Remember this time, we don't know if it's a threat or not but we're spinning around and realizing it could be, and I better be careful. Keep carrying forward away from the threat. So without this concept or idea, a person might turn around like this upon hearing something suddenly. Now notice, I spun around on the spot. One, two, and instead of carrying forward, stopped and turned around. That would be the normal thing to do in a non-combative situation. Well, we're a little more aware than that. So we realize we better spin around in a tactically sound way. And this way too, if it's a threat, we've prepared for it well. If it's not a threat, no harm done. If it's not a threat, it'll just look like this. We heard the thing, we continued to carry forward. Oh, sorry, and you surprised me. You know, no harm done. She's going to realize she surprised you or he surprised you or whoever it was that came up behind you. And of course, if there was an issue and you spun around and you could deal with it with one of the attack combinations. You see his attack, you attack. I want to cover that more though in another video that we spin around and attack and all the things. But basically that's it in a nutshell right there. So, back to the instructors who are teaching this, and of course it's instructive to all of us to learn it, because many of you, most of you, probably almost all of you, are training alone at home like I do in my private little dojo here. So, you're moving away from the target. If you were the instructor and you were clapping your hands, you'll find the students are all walking, but then when you clap your hands, some of them will be in a step stride, if you will, that allows them to turn almost instantaneously when they hear the sound. That's nice. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it is. Let me explain. Others may be, let's say I hear the sound now. I can't turn to a left side lead. I'm going to have to step again. I hear the sound, I'm going to have to step again. But notice the advantage that I had. I carried further away from the potential attack. If the attacker were in fact pursuing you with a punch, you would be moving away from the attack. So notice, I'm gonna just step and turn each time I step to make the point about you're learning to step and turn, to turn as you walk.
and not turn around on the spot. The walk and turn.